Okay, everybody. So now we're going to talk about note taking strategies. And the most important idea here is that you should not write everything you hear. You just don't have time and it's not efficient. So I'm going to talk about some strategies, um, ways that you can avoid writing down everything you hear, but instead write down the most important things. So the first thing, number one, is don't write complete sentences. Uh, you don't have time to write complete sentences. It's not necessary to write complete sentences. So that's probably the most important thing. And then related to that, number two, instead of writing complete sentences, um, just focus on content words. So for example, if you focus on just writing down nouns and verbs, adjectives, numbers, for example, um, those are always the most important words. And um, that's what you should focus on when you're taking notes. And then, because you're only writing down content words, number three, it will mean that you are not going to write down function words. And that means you're not going to write down articles like a uh, or the. You're not going to write down prepositions like on or to. And helping verbs like will or can, you might want to avoid those too. They're just not necessary when you're taking notes. Um, another idea for you, number four, is to use symbols. So my examples here in the PowerPoint are, instead of writing and, you've got a plus sign. Don't write the word dollars, of course, just make the dollar symbol. Um, something that's related or uh, you can show to or through with an arrow, for example. Um, and then related to this is using abbreviations. And there are common abbreviations that everybody knows. So for example, the abbreviation for international, the abbreviation for US, and the abbreviation for university. But you know what? These are your notes. You can do whatever you want. And if you have some common abbreviations that you use and you know, go ahead and use them. Everybody has their own abbreviations. It just has to work for you. Remember, notes are for you. Okay, and then very important is to use a graphic organizer or outline to show relationship between ideas. So it's very easy when you're, when you're taking notes, you're under pressure, uh, you're trying to write as fast as you can, that you just might make a big long list of all the ideas, but you want to do something to show uh, the relationship between the ideas. So is there a larger idea and are there smaller ideas like details or examples or could you show that two different people are talking or could you show um, could you show that there's the the speaker lists something so you want to you want to practice doing that um, to show basically uh, how how ideas are related to each other by using a graphic organizer and we're going to do just that or I'm going to do just that I'm going to do um, a a note, I'm going to take notes, and you're going to watch me take notes. And what you'll notice is that it certainly isn't very pretty, but that's okay because these notes are for me. Um, and we'll kind of talk a little bit more about the personal nature of notes. Nobody's going to see your notes. You're not going to be graded on your notes. The notes just have to be effective for yourself. So you're going to be able to watch me taking notes, listening to something that's going to be from the TOEFL test and take notes, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Review, listening section, questions one to four. Conversation. Listen to a conversation on campus between two students. Wait up, I need to ask you about something. Oh, hi Jack. Hi, listen, I was just wondering whether you understood what Professor Carson was saying about the review session next Monday? Sure, why? Well, the way I get it, it's optional. Right. He said if we didn't have any questions, we should just use the time to study on our own. Okay, that's what I thought. Maybe I'll just skip it then. Well, it's up to you. But the thing is, sometimes at a review session, someone else will ask a question, and you know, the, the way the professor explains it, it's really helpful. I mean, to figure out what he wants on the test. Oh, I didn't think about it that way, but it makes sense. So you're going to go then? Absolutely. Um. I've had a couple other classes with Carson, and the review sessions always helped get me organized for the test. Oh. And if you've missed any of the lectures, he usually has extra handouts from all the classes, so... Well, I haven't missed any of the sessions. Me neither. But I'm still going to be there. Look, uh, if it's like the other review sessions, the first hour he's going to go over the main points for each class. 
kind of like an outline of the course. Then from 5.30 to 6.30, he'll take questions. That's the best part. In the last half hour, he'll stay for individual conferences with people who need extra help. I usually don't stay for that. Okay, so we just show up at the regular time and place for class? Or not, if you decide to study on your own. Right. But don't you think he'll notice who's there? He said he wasn't going to take attendance. Yeah, but still. It's a fairly large class. But if he's grading your final and he remembers you were at the review, it might make a difference. Maybe. I think the important thing is just to study really hard and do your best. But the review sessions help me study. I think they're really good. Okay, thanks. I guess I'll go too. So I'll see you there. Yeah, I think I, I'd better go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and scroll back up to the, fr uh, the first part. And um, we're going to look at my outline. And the first thing you should notice is that it is really hard to read. Um, and guess what? That's okay. Because these are my notes for myself. And I'm going to take the notes and then I'm going to listen to the questions and I'm going to be able to remember what I wrote. Um, so don't worry, your notes are for yourself, no one else. You never, nobody's going to grade you on your notes. Um, so even though my notes are kind of messy and hard to read, we're actually going to go over my notes. It's a little embarrassing, but I'm going to go over my notes and we're going to see if I used any note taking strategies. Okay. So the first thing, um, the most important thing is, of course, not writing down everything that you that you heard, and I didn't do that. I think I did a good job with that. So no complete sentences. So if I look through and I scroll down, I see nope, no complete sentences, um, which is which is exactly what I should, uh, what we should all do when we're taking notes. And so how do you avoid take? Uh, um, how do you avoid not um, writing complete sentences? Well, number two, the most important thing is content words only. So you'll notice that I used verbs. I used um, adjectives, I used um, nouns, but I didn't use um, a lot of number three function words. So I didn't use prepositions very many, maybe just a couple. Um, I avoided articles uh, and the. Um, and again, just, just focusing on the content words. And um, the fourth thing about the note-taking strategies is to use symbols. So let's look and see if I used any symbols. So, yep, I used lines, um, you know, to show a relationship between the ideas. So that would replace a word like to or something like that. Check marks here for yes. Um, anything else? You know, I underline things that I think uh, were important. So I did use some symbols. Um, and then the next thing is number five, gra uh, abbreviations. I think I did a good job with that. So for example, I started with rev ses, which of course means review session. Now, you know, in two years, I could look back at this and not remember what rev sesh meant, but be you're gonna be listening and then answering questions right after. You're gonna know what that is. So I made a little, little abbreviations that are gonna make sense to me in the moment. Um, S-T-U-D is study. Q for question, CL for class, um, HO is handout, and that is actually, uh, as a teacher, an abbreviation I use all the time. So that's a very familiar abbreviation. Remember, you can make your own abbreviations, and as long as you remember what they are, um, it's all good. So finally, um, we want to look and see if I did graphic organization. Well, the first thing to tell you is that in, in a conversation, it's a little hard to do graphic organization. Um, you'll find that sometimes the lecture it's a little easier because they actually have a logical flow. A conversation's a conversation. Um, and sometimes not very organized. But I tried my best. So for example, I showed the man uh, talking on the left and the woman talking on the right. Um, when she was listing things like the first hour, the second hour, and the third hour, I showed one, two, three. Um, I tried to kind of show large idea, small idea. So, um, you know, I think I did my best with graphic organization. To be honest with conversations, it's not going to be it's not going to be like a lovely lecture uh, lecture organization. It's it's going to be uh, not quite as organized. So, uh, even though I would 
be a little embarrassed to show these notes to anyone, although I'm showing all of you. Um, I think I did a pretty good job of capturing the information in a very short amount of time, so um, I'm pretty happy with my notes. Now let's look at an outline that's basically the same information, but a little easier to read, and that's going to help us talk a little bit more about outlines.